So let's hear it for the tough people from Canada. I expected to talk after lunch, but it's okay. We'll take it from here, so I suppose that's how we move it. And first of all, uh, Langdon, I'm an engineer myself, so I apologize to the audience. Um, the difference a little bit is that I'm an engineer that is fascinated by culture. Because I understand some years ago that uh, innovation is made by people, and culture is the secret source of innovation. So the way we understand culture and how to drive the people towards achieving the real results, because innovation is not about technology, innovation is about creating value. And value may come in various formats for the, for the organization. So I'll talk about measuring innovation, innovation management, and uh, I've been putting this slogan in Canada for quite a while, because Canada is second largest country in the world, it's one of the top 10 economies in the world, and we keep on beating ourselves because we are not innovating enough. Canada has tremendous resources, but doesn't have enough of these resources to take advantage of innovation. So I came with a slogan saying, innovation is a renewable corporate and national resource to be developed, used, and commercialized for economic and social benefits. Okay, so we'll talk about measurements. So, are we measuring innovation? Are we, are we measuring the corporate innovation? Are we measuring the management of the corporate innovation? And basically, from an innovator perspective, you have this simple process, linear process, it's not simple. Uh, idea generation, implement it, and then you exploit it internally or externally through commercialization. And that's one way of looking at that. You manage that as a project with the right metrics and such to move forward. But if you are a business owner, uh, business leader, an entrepreneur, you have to look at innovation management in your company, in your organization, business or, or public and such, in a multidimensional uh, context. So number one, market understanding. You are in this context. Why are you there? What do you want to do there? Who is doing what? Uh, where is it being done? To whom we do it? And when should we be doing it? And how should we be doing it? I call those the seven W questions. And the same, uh, the same is applied to the resources because you create a company because you can't do things by yourself. You surround yourself by the resources, you have to organize them, you have to create the right culture in the, in the organization to move forward. Technology and the processes. Even if you are not a technology company, you use technology to, to develop your services, your products, to deliver them and so on. So it's very critical for the success in the context of this market there. Then, of course, you have your portfolio of solutions that you provide to the market, and you have to look at the, at the value achievement. How do you achieve value from all those innovations and activities? And the same seven W questions apply everywhere. So the issue here is how do you measure, how do you manage, because without metrics you cannot really measure, uh, uh, manage something, how do you manage the, context, the innovation at the corporate level? And I'm going to focus to a large extent on that. But you talk in the context of the ISO, 56,000, and ISO 56,004 is the innovation management assessment. It's not a standard at the moment, it's a technical report. There have been a lot of discussions, a lot of discussions and arguments and debates. Should we have a, a, a standard, even a guidance standard, that looks at uh, innovation management assessment of the management system, or are we looking at innovation management assessment in general. So in the end, we decided to go first with the technical report, and maybe in the forthcoming years, we are going to move to a, a management, uh, an assessment of the innovation management system, but it was premature given the fact that the innovation management system standard 56002 has not yet been published to come with uh, assessment methodologies for the, uh, for the system standard. And even that system standard is a guidance standard for the moment. It's not a compliance standard. There are moves afoot to start working on a compliance standard, uh, like the ISO 9000, not just a guidance standard. So as a technical report, and it's an excellent technical report, I do recommend that you acquire it and, and read it. It looks at the principles for assessing management of innovation, looks at the various objectives, uh, looks at the modalities of undertaking innovation management assessment, uh, 
uh, what are you trying to look for, or how are you going to collect the data, how do you prepare the organization before you do the assessment, how do you handle the, the data from the assessment and such, and again looking at the usefulness and so on. But it is not prescriptive. Okay? It's not even a guidance standard, it's, it's a technical report that captures a lot of the elements that may go into an innovation management assessment and points to various ways of, of doing such a thing. Okay? So for the rest of, uh, of, of my presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, the middle stuff, how to manage corporate innovation competitively, comprehensively, and methodically with the right metrics in order to ensure value. And it's very simple, it's common sense. First of all, you have to know yourself, what works and what doesn't work in your organization. Secondly, you have to know your enemy, your competition, and how much better or worse they are than you and so on, and measure your, uh, against the competition. Then you have to decide what are the right things to do in order to become better, create more value, and, and beat the competition. Fourth, you have to do those things the right way. And fifth, you have to keep on evaluating, adjusting, learning, and continuing because competition never ends, therefore innovation cannot end. Okay? So, it's very important to devise a balanced portfolio of corporate innovation metrics, and Langdon has a, a book somewhere <laughs> about the whole thing. Um, and I've, I've been using a, what I call a value add competitive innovation management framework, which starts at the base of the pyramid with the market knowledge and the business model that defines the organization, the resources without which you cannot really achieve much in this organization, the culture and the structure of the organizations right there in the, in the Pharaoh's chamber within the pyramid, and then of course the solutions that the organization is creating, their own processes, their platforms, their products and their services. And at the top of the pyramid is the value that the com organization is creating in terms of uh, financial value, social value, customer value, brand value, and all that stuff. So, in order to create a, a portfolio of metrics that allow you to understand how all this complex system is working across all those dimen dimensions of competitiveness, uh, you have to look at what I'm putting there on the right side in terms of the market strategies and business models, the resources in terms of people, facilities, partners, the partners are your resources as well, looking at the culture of the organization, looking at the solutions that you are creating, the processes, the platforms, and the products, and of course you measure the value outcomes. Very important, you also have to measure the innovation process itself, and that's what you talk about innovation management assessment. So you need to select competitive metrics, and we'll talk a little bit about the value of the metrics, and you'll have to look at the organizations from all perspectives possible. You can have a, a conglomerate, and you use different metrics at the conglomerate level, you have different metrics at the division or departmental level, and you have to understand the life cycle perspective, the stage at which the organization is. Is it a startup? Is it one that is growing and growing fast? Is it one that has, is mature, or it's one that is in decline? So, uh, on that basis, this portfolio, I call it a firm innovation scorecard, and as you know, executives do not like to be bombarded by too much data. So, you can think about, at the minimum, with a three composite metrics for the executive, and a, a summary FISC. Number one is the innovation acuity. Are you really doing the stuff that the company or the organization really needs to be doing? It's market in engagement index, and there is a percentage of the total. There is the innovation enablement. Do you have the resources and the culture? Are you managing those in order to become more competitive, more value uh, creative? And of course, the other one is, are you growing profitable? Uh, what is the value of the innovation that you get? And good companies, and I've seen a lot of them, we've done five years of intense studies in Canada, part of the conference board, the Center for Business Innovation, looking at innovation metrics and management across uh, the entire industry in Canada, across all geographies and industry sectors. And the, some of the best companies are looking at evaluations of such a firm innovation scorecard every month, putting green flags, red flags, and yellow flags, and always discussing the red and the yellow flags with decisions of, about why is the red or yellow there, uh, what are the potential implications, and what should they be doing in order to get back into a green situation. That's what management is all about. 
Now, of course, I said these are composite metrics. Uh, the, the portfolio council, the innovation portfolio council, the chief innovation officer and his or her people, they need much more detail, much better resolution in order to understand where the issues are. And here are examples of, of uh, 10 metrics uh, bunched again with uh, specifics in terms of market knowledge, uh, resources, specifics in terms of culture and organization, uh, the solutions, and of course the, the outcomes of, of the whole thing. So my question to you uh, in your companies, do you have a firm innovation scorecard? How many people have such a thing? Wow, not many, okay. And by the way, I did a number of studies of universities in Canada and I was very shocked, they themselves were shocked by the fact that there was very little innovation activities at the university level, at the corporate university level. Um, and the other question is, how often do you analyze your firm innovation scorecard? Do you do it every month, do you do it every six months or maybe every three years? Anyway, it's a good question to think about. I have to go forward. So one question is about how many corporate innovation metrics. There have been a number of studies of that. I did my own study in Canada and found out that in Canada, the distribution was about 40% of companies had no innovation metrics at the, at the corporate level. About 6% had one, and then it was going down from there uh, two or three, and I correlated that with their own assessments of how the company performed on three measures of performance. I'll show you here only one, which was the five-year cumulative annual growth rate. And as you can see, that companies with no innovation metrics did much poorer on the average. The zero line is the average of the entire group. One companies with one metric actually did much worse, partly because the metric that they chose was misleading. And then, of course, the performance grew uh, better and better, and the optimum number of metrics is 6 to 10, because beyond 10, you start getting into more administrative b burdens and so on. So think about how much better our industry performance could be if we can convince executives and innovation managers in companies to select 6 to 10 uh, metrics every year for the corporate innovation and evaluate them properly and move forward. And, of course, have the appropriate metrics. So the next aspect was, um, what of the metrics were most used? And uh, here is a, just the top five metrics used in Canada. And I captured there the number of firms using that metric, part of the study, as well with what I call the a percentage uh, performance effectiveness, it, which is the perf the how much better on average was the performance of the companies using the metrics versus the average of all companies' performance in the study. As you can see, uh, number one metrics was customer satisfaction with new products. Number two, return on innovation investment. The performance equivalence was about 15% better or so. Then I asked myself the question, what metrics are associated with higher performance? And I started getting very interesting results. Number one was executive intensity involvement. Okay? But don't forget that the culture in the company is driven very much by the leadership of the company. Much better performance uh, equivalence, 40%. Market understanding, addressable customer innovation. Number five, Innovation risk management. Too many organizations think, oh, no, innovation is risky. Oh, we have to make sure that we don't risk anything. And actually, innovation and risk management should uh, support each other. I had a meeting with the chief councils of uh, risk management in, uh, in made all major Canadian companies and uh, asked them, how many of you are involved in innovation management? And only one guy showed a little timid hand. And I told them, but guys, the biggest risk to a company is that it does not innovate enough to stay competitive. Have you thought about that? Oh, no. Okay. So the metric performance effect is, is indication of the culture and the process in the company, not the value of the metric itself. Uh, here is quickly a top usage metric pair was customer satisfaction and new product revenue, about 20% better performance on average. But in terms of performance equivalence, executive intensity and market understanding went to about 65% better performance on average, but only 16 companies use that, okay? There is also a, a triplet here, executive accountability, market value of innovation, and market understanding, about 22 companies, 70% more on the average performance, okay? By the way, no two companies are the same, so don't use the metrics that are most significant for you for the situation, the competitive situation that you are facing. So. As I mentioned before, it's all about executives. A fish rots from the head down. This is a universal proverb. 
It is the leadership of an organization that drives the organization to be what it is, to act as it does, to succeed or to fail. I have not seen a company that declined and died because the workers were not good. Companies, most of them decline and die because the executives make the wrong decisions. Okay? So I suggest that, again, and I, to start evaluation of innovation management in a company by evaluating the executives in the company, the executive team, in order to understand how they think about innovation, how they think about the culture in the company, what kind of innovation practices, management practices they put in place. And from there, once the, you get them on, on your team, once they get them to understand the importance of innovation management, then you can go through all the layers of the innovation organization and, and understand how to do it. So you look at how they are aligned to the business goals and strategy. You look at their culture understanding and their commitment to innovation. You look at their understanding of the competition and many times, especially with SMEs, they ask them, who is your competitor? They said, I have no competitor. So excuse me, if you don't have a competitor, you don't exist. I mean, you don't deserve to exist and such, okay? They have, they have to, they, you assess their understanding of the innovation management practices in the, in the company and many times executives, including the CEO said, I have no idea about that. I don't know what metrics we use. I don't know how we are organized and such. One of the question is, who is the, who is responsible for innovation in the company? And you'll be surprised how many people are going all over the place. The VP of technology, the guy in development, and very few times I got the right answers. It's the CEO who is responsible for innovation in the company. The same way that the CEO is responsible for the culture in the company. The buck has to stop somewhere and it is at the desk of the CEO. So I created a little tool just to put a little bit of advertisement there. Uh, it's called the Competitive Value Guide. It can be used by companies and their consultants to enhance the performance in terms of there. It can be used by investors and that's a very interesting approach. My son is, a, is an investor, he's an American by now. Uh, living in New York, he worked with the Carlyle Group, he worked with the American Capital. They do, of course, due diligence to understand should they invest big uh, money into a company or not. Very rarely do they look at the innovation management aspects of the company. Okay? So if they would do that, they would find out that when they project, um, my revenues are going like that, but if you give me the investment, it'll go like this. And that's a red line that is all in the future. And on what basis do you predict that future? Show me that you have the system to manage that future. And very seldomly, very rarely do investors look at the future in, in, a, in a structured way. And I'm suggesting that such innovation management assessment tools would be a great value to investment companies as well. And of course, governments put a lot of money into boosting the innovation agendas. And uh, sometimes they miss very badly. And doing such an assessment of, of industries, uh, they could find out what really is required to boost the industry in one sector or another or in one geography or another. And uh, basically I'm the second person that has finished before the right time. Uh, and I'm saying that uh, a company can grow, enhance its competitiveness and avoid decline if and only if, it's a mathematical statement. It diagnoses itself competitively and pursues meaningful innovation with metrics-based management methodologies. Don't forget that metrics drive behavior. Set up your manageable objectives, underline manageable objectives, give them the right resources, and put in place the right metrics, and don't worry, they are going to achieve the objectives, your objectives. Thank you.